we have capacity to influence environment, to influence other people, to influence the universe with our intention. I'm not a businessman, I'm a scientist and the experiment that we are doing, we try to prove it. We are light beings. Wow. We are spiritual beings. We are part of universe creation. We are not just clever monkeys. We are the whole system. It's impossible mm -hmm. to divide body, mind and spirit. It's all one system. My intention to change the consciousness of the world, to teach people that we are not just physical bodies. We are spiritual beings. We are part of universe. And if people understand this, they change the attitude to everything. A lot of people, they live in stress, they live in anxiety, they live in fear. This makes their life miserable. And then they can recreate their own life to be happy. This week's episode dives deep into, well, what can I say? It's human bioenergetics. Constantine has actually gone away and done two decades worth of research on the human bio field and basically come to the conclusion that we are beings of light. How did he come to this? What did he discover? What does that mean for us as a species? What does it mean for our consciousness? What does it mean for our thoughts, how they emanate, how we receive information? This is such a rich conversation. It is based in hard science, but then like it's opened completely spiritually. It is a really intriguing conversation to feel into what potentially the human species even is. Um, and yeah, it, it's just a really rich conversation. I found it really intriguing to just contemplate what it really means to not be just meat and matter, but to be, yeah, something that, you know, is completely measurable in hertz and joules and, you know, just walking around as frequency and light touch wood. It's a bit of a trip touch wood, but enjoy this trip. Tune into the episode. Hopefully you're going to love it. And, uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Welcome to the Inspired Evolution. And we have with us today, wow, Konstantin Korotkov. Konstantin, welcome to the show. It is such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. Oh my God. For those that are tuning into Constantine for the first time, he is an author. He wrote the book, The Energy of Health, Understanding Biowell Analysis. And we're definitely going to be talking about Biowell and what that means and what it is. He is a computer science and biophysics professor. Um, he's dedicated himself to the study of the human energy light system. What is is the human energy light system, what is like the Karelian effect? Where do I begin with you, Constantine? There is so much ground to cover. But first place to start, I guess, is to ask you the question, how did you first become interested in the human body and its energetics? Because it's not something that many people I would feel are generally aware of, let alone dedicating their entire scientific and computer science background and awareness and understanding to trying to decode and then give information about which your work does. So what was going on in your life? Who were you? Who are you? Where did this start? Please explain. <laughs> okay. My background was quantum physicist. Mm. So I graduated uh, university in the Soviet Union in Leningrad yeah. as quantum physicist. And that's why I was involved in the university, in different institutions with laser physics, plasma physics, cosmic physics, optics, uh, so different fields uh, related to quantum physics. And mm. my first day he was in, on quantum physics uh, in 1982. 1982. So, uh, yeah, but then uh, it somehow it, I had a different <laughs> interesting station in my life, spiritual stations. Once mm. uh, being a PhD and having some job in physics, I met uh, one of my old friends mm. who told, oh, Constantine, I was looking for you. Do you want to to be involved in a very interesting project? Okay, what's tell me? Okay, this is total secret, so you need to promise me that it will be just between us. Mm -hmm. And the project was 
to create the system of telepathy communication oh. between uh, submarines and satellites uh, or our cosmic stations. Oh. So it was a big uh, state project in Soviet Union in the 80s, 1980s. Hmm. Uh, we were, we, so I became the deputy director of this laboratory and we had unlimited funding, unlimited. Wow. We was able to buy any equipment we need. <sighs> and every summer we were coming to Baltic states, to Latvia mostly. Uh, we were given some building. It <sighs> was school, was empty for summer. And uh, in this school we were able to establish our equipment, a lot of different equipment and mm -hmm. to make experiments. And plus, we were able to select uh, gifted people all over the Soviet <sighs> Union. And yeah, brought right. them there by the state order. So people was given an order to go to the service, compulsory service. So mm -hmm. this way, after in two years, we were able to find out conditions for telepathic communication between people. Really? Uh, and later on, I developed approach uh, between person and uh, technical systems, uh, different sensors. So I developed a set of sensors that respond to human intention. Mm. And this uh, gave us, so it was well developed. We wrote several reports. Later on in the uh, 90s, mid 90s, I wrote some papers about this because by that time in the 80s it was forbidden, it was a total secret. Mm. Uh, so it, is, it became clear for all of us that our human system, mm. it's not just physical body, it's not right. our mind, it's not our brain, and our yeah. consciousness is not product of our brain. It's not like uh, bail uh, in um, our body, mm. most juices in our stomach. So mm. it's much more than that. It's a part of collective consciousness. It's a part of universe, and that's uh, and before uh, I was always interested in philosophy, in religion, uh, in uh, arts. Uh, so that's why for me it was very natural to pay more, much more attention to this side of uh, life, mm -hmm. to consciousness. And you know that uh, by eighties, nineties, it was very unusual to study consciousness. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah, but, um, I was lucky to meet some people who've been uh, using uh, Kirlian photography. It was line, yes, very thick line, to yeah. study light coming from different subjects in electromagnetic fields and uh -huh. to make a record of this on photography, on photo films. Photo film. It was yeah, beautiful. Right, okay. and thousands of people were involved in this field, but this field wasn't scientific mm. because you have beautiful pictures, wonderful pictures, colorful mm -hmm. pictures. But in science, first of all, it should be, everything should be reproducible. Repeatable. Yeah, absolutely. And repeatable. So it means if you study something, it should be same day by day. The My next temperature time. when I'm healthy is one is the same. And it should be same practically while I'm healthy. If mm. it's changing, then it's something going on. Wrong. Plus, yeah. is, it should be uh, repeatable. So mm. it means if someone is doing some experiments, someone else should repeat it in other part of the world. Mm. That is why Nobel Prizes are given to people only after many, many years of their <laughs> discovery. Mm. Yeah. It should be repeated in other parts of the world. So with Kirlian photography, it was very difficult, practically impossible. That is why I came to understanding that we need to transform from Kirlian photography to something else, mm. to modern. Technology. And in 1995, with our team in the, our technical university, where I was a professor by that time, uh, we've been able to develop absolutely new device. So <laughs> this device is using more sophisticated hardware. By that time now, of course, we're improving every several years. Yeah. And our modern BioWell device is totally different from the previous ones. Yeah. Uh, then the most important, we are using sophisticated software. Yeah and algorithms. So after many years of uh, study of discoveries, I've been developing uh, many algorithms. Mm -hmm. And all our algorithms was tested in clinical practice. So again, I was lucky to meet interested people uh, in the universities in Russia, in uh, Georgia, in uh, Armenia, 
in the United States, in England, France, who was interested to do something new, who was mm. interested to study something that is related not only to physical body, but mm-hmm. to more broad understanding of human being. And you know that uh, that's this way I've been developing step by step. And now what we have now, of course, it's great, great mm. development, a big uh, step forward compared yeah. to what we started. It's incredible. So the fundamental question to ask, if we are not just our body and we're not just our mind, we are a part of the universe and we are a part of consciousness. What does that mean tangibly? What are we? Are we, some people, like, are we light? I know that is a question that um, could be derived from your studies of the the human light system um, and what the bio device does, but I don't want to program your answer. What are we? You see, now we have big research in consciousness in 21st century. Mm. And first of all, it is related to neuroscience because neuroscience mm. now have a powerful instrument that which allow to study the activity of brain and mm. nervous system in real life. So it's amazing, of course. Yeah. And the achievement that was done in the last uh, maybe 10, 15 years, it is amazing. Yeah. So now we have uh, understanding how brain uh, operate in different situations, how and where we have the seat of different uh, sensors, Mm. our vision, uh, hearing, and so on, how we feel, how we um, uh, create emotions. And that is why big part of scientists, they believe, believe, Mm. that all the consciousness, this is in the brain. This yeah, is <laughs> this is common. Yeah, even my logo for the inspired evolution is the brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at the same time, there are another part of scientists mm. and uh, top level scientists in uh, neuro uh, science, yeah, what do they in say? psychology, in physics, who think that it's not everything. Yes, mm. we are operated by our brain. Mm. Yes, we have physical body, mm. but we are much more than that. We have capacity to influence environment, to influence other people, to influence the universe with our intention, with our thoughts. And science, which uh, I'm involved in and the experiment that we are doing, we try to prove it with repeatable Mm. experiments. So it's not just my idea to develop um, technology and uh, methods which allow all interested people to repeat our experiments, to create Mm. their own experiments and to prove that we are light beings, that we are spiritual beings, that we are part of universe creation, that we are not just uh, clever monkeys, monkeys. (laughs) We are much more than that. (laughs) And there are two between apes and uh, old monkeys and a human being. So it wow. was, the, it was, of course, I don't know who has created us. <laughs> was it some yeah. uh, aliens or, or some spiritual topic uh, creatures? But yeah. for us, it is absolutely clear. It was a huge gap, artificial construction between uh. human and animal kingdom. Yeah, wow. Were you able... Were you ever able to communicate from the submarines to outer space? Like, did the did the telepathic like that was the mission you were initially set? Were you able to telepathically communicate, and did you be able to pick sensors? Yes, of course. It's it's not very complicated. Really? It is, yeah, absolutely. It's quite easy. For example, I use it in my everyday life mm. when I need to contact some person. I just and I have no time to call. I just ask a person to call me. Hmm. And uh, most cases, people call me or people meet me or very typical again, I you recall some person you haven't hmm. seen for many years and then you yeah. meet this person. Yeah. By, by call. It's very typical. Yeah. So this is uh, the topic that in principle, a lot of us we use in everyday life. The only topic people don't believe in this. People are afraid of this. Hmm. That is why they block themselves. But if you're mm-hmm. open, if you understand that this is possible and this is nothing mm-hmm. special in this, then you can use it. And uh, it's a lot of anecdotal cases when people send emotions to each other. 
yeah. when people feel emotions of other people. So it's very typical. Same as communication with possessed people, past uh, from uh, with other worlds. Again, it's uh, quite normal situations. Mm. Yeah, I was going to ask why do you think people are afraid of this, but maybe I'll use myself as an example. I guess one of the concerns is probably the right word I have is that if I'm able to telepathically communicate out, and my am, am I always broadcasting? This is the question, right? Am I always broadcasting? Because I have some thoughts sometimes which I go, <gasps> like that wasn't a thought that was aligned with myself, you know, sometimes I have these darker thoughts or concerning thoughts and, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I, I fear malice from someone that I'm walking down the street, let's just say as an example, but that person's innocent when they come closer, but from afar, it's like, ooh, and then, you know, but how much is that, I imagine that's probably why the fear is there about, you know, my mind is attracting things and I'm attracting the world to be a certain way with my mind because we don't have complete control over our mind, it seems, and the quality of thoughts that we're thinking. Is that no. the key uh, fear? You, yeah, we need to understand, and it's uh, proven now, that mm. about uh, 85% of what is going on in our mind is it is out of our conscious control. Yo. Because we accept millions of signals every second yeah. from everywhere. And of we're course, like we... antenna, right? Sorry, yes, that, that, yeah, that's, that's so and interesting. We don't uh, respond to this. We don't even mention this because we don't yeah. have to. Otherwise, it would be uh, our brain would be overloaded. <laughs> so, a very clear system of control: how right brain, a sensitive brain, send information to left brain, mm. and then with left brain, we uh, our system makes analysis: or oh, do we need this information or don't? For example, mm. very clear. All the ladies, all the women, they can describe what was the color of a shirt of a lady yesterday, what was mm. the color of your, her shoes, what was her dressing, what was her rings. Mm. If you ask men, nobody, actually nobody can tell us. So, mm. absolutely different system of comprehension. Right. And men's brain, uh, classical men's brain, it makes uh, attention to much less details compared with women's brain. Yeah. So this is just an example, and mm -hmm. it's a natural example. So same way with all our intentions, all our thoughts. We have internal, introvert side, mm -hmm. and extrovert side. And of course, different people different. Mm -hmm. We have... We work a lot with autistic children. Of course, they are totally introvert. They are totally mm -hmm. closed. And to get some access to their internal part, it is very difficult. It is really hard, uh, hard job and uh, we should be very professional people. So mm -hmm. that is why. When you are inside yourself with your own thoughts, with your own emotions, you are inside yourself. Right. But when you want to send something outside, uh, when yeah. you send some intention, when mm. you send love or mm. unfortunately hate, then it can influence, of course, other people very easily. That's right. why uh, you can easily detect people who are nice and yeah. who are radiant with positive energy, and you mm. can detect people who are negative. Right. So it is absolutely clear because we all influence the uh, environment and we all influence other people. I have to ask this question. I find women are more clued in and tuned in naturally into these sort of intuitive awarenesses. Do you have you found anything like that in your research, or is it much the same for men? No, it's not yeah. me found. I think it's just a proven um, proven fact that um, the mind of men and women different. Yeah, different corpus callosum. We have different. Yeah activity of different uh, parts of the mind. So, of course, women, they are much more intuitive. They are, aren't they? They have yeah. more developed right brain activity. Yeah. But with men. Men mm. typically are more logical. Of course, it's uh, like um, two, uh, two polarities. But most mm. of people, they are in between. Yes. This. Most of people. And now we know that there are now a mix of genders. So that's why it's different. But still, we need to understand, we are two different species. Mm. We have different construction of the body, totally different. Mm. 
except of internal organs, everything is different, yes. Mm. We have different endocrine system and mm -hmm. different activity of endocrine system and it uh, dictates our behavior, it dictates our emotions. We have different construction of the brain. Mm. So it is specially designed to make our society different. Right. The, uh, the only way of uh, development of any system, mm. including human society, this is diversity. The more diverse is mm. population, the better. That's why the more robust, people have the, white yeah. people, black people, yellow people, red people, that's very good. This creates mm. our diversity. This creates mm. the chance to develop, to mm. make our system great. Mm -hmm. That's what we want now more and more. And we see examples of this in some countries like Brazil, for example. Yeah. What goes on with the BioWell device thing? Can you describe us a little bit what we're reading when we're getting the BioWell device? Is it enabling me to be able to tell if someone is more loving or more hateful? Or what is what am I what am I using the BioWell device for? BioWell, it's a complicated system. It's use, mm. easy to use, but in reality, yeah. it's very complicated. The Hardware, text, the text full on. Yeah. Software. Yes, 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 yes. And we have very um, big software system, and mm. it's uh, now it, it's on a uh, server in Amazon server uh, because it's really too big to be kept in the computer. And uh, it allows us to see physiological and psychological features of a person. Mm. So we can distinguish what is the influence of psychology, what is the influence of physiology. Right. And we can study tiny details mm. of the system and what's important we can see response of people to anything for example just yesterday i've been here in israel in uh, uh, one um, center of integrative medicine and we did many interest very interesting experiments mm. they had nine people with cancer mm. on different stages of cancer okay. and they Start, they've been using their own methods to increase their self-belief, right. to increase their emotional side, mm. to increase their energy. And we've been studying them initially, of course, and then after one week and after one month. Results was amazing, really amazing. Really? Yes. With BioWell, we've seen for all of them increase of energy, mm. increase of activity of different uh, parts of endocrine system, mm -hmm. decrease of stress, hmm. balance of their chakras, and this is yeah. indication, sympathetic parasympathetic parasympathetic balance. And of course, uh, after this training, uh, very complicated psychological training, very special, they all became much more aware in life. And even we understand that not all of, all, all of them would live longer because of mm. the, some aggressive cancer, but they live now full life yeah, and they wow. enjoy their life, even being uh, having these difficult problems. So this is just an example. And BioWell was oh, the yeah. best system to detect yeah. because in parallel, we've been using, of course, uh, blood tests. We've been using HRV and uh, Ronald McCrathy uh, from Institute of Human Heart, uh, Heart Mass Institute. He oh, will yeah. make the own analysis and it's very good results as well. Very good. Mm. Because he really demonstrates a uh, response of sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system and balancing this. So our results was very well correlated. Uh, so this is just example. So BioWell, it is very powerful instrument, which we use for express analysis. Mm -hmm on the first stage, which allows you to see practically all your organs and systems and yeah, to right. see which areas of your body. Mm -hmm. Plus, see emotional side and to see the effect of emotional side to your system. What does that and look then, like? Do you see it in your different, like different emotions in your different organs or like, what do you like, what does the uh, emotional analysis look like? Emotions, they're not related to organs. Yeah, right. Emotions we have as a whole system. Yeah, okay. We are the whole system. It's impossible mm. to divide between mm. body, mind, and spirit. It's all yeah. united. Unified, it's all one. Mm. Yes, it's all one. It's all one system. And only if we address to all this system in simultaneously, if we keep our body strong and healthy, 
if we keep our mind active, if mm. we keep our spirit clean, then mm. of course we can enjoy our life. Yeah. We can live long life within in good conditions. If not, then we deteriorate in some of this field. Mm. Sorry, I interrupted you telling me the bio well outputs. Yeah, so that is why uh, with BioWell we mm. take readings and it's very it's one minute to less than one minute to take these readings mm. and then practically immediately we have analysis mm. and analysis based on many algorithms and as I've told all those algorithms they are tested in uh, universities and medical universities in psychological departments uh, with uh, big research with hundreds of people we have more than maybe 200 papers published in peer journals. I have uh, 15 books on this topic mm. and uh, you can find uh, it's all on the internet. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and of course it's done by professionals. Mm -hmm. It's not just our team who was mm -hmm. doing this. It was impossible. It was done by professionals, professional medical doctors, psychologists, researchers in different countries. That's the mm -hmm. power. And I'm happy that uh, after maybe practically more than 25 years of development, we never, ever had negative response. Never. Yeah. Touch wood. I would love to... So part of me uh, assumed prior to coming to this episode that the BioWell device was a diagnostic tool that you would it would give you input um, about it. But you mentioned that there were people suffering with stuff, um, that they were going through treatment, and the BioWell um, was able... I got the impression that it was able to help their treatment. Can you? Is it a diagnostic tool, or does it actually support your wellness? Um, or of the things it diagnoses, you're able to go. Like, can you describe exactly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, BioWell uh, mostly we use for analysis of state, mm. and it was proven that it's about eighty percent correlation with classical analysis. Eighty percent. Mm. A little bit more, a little bit less. And we have in parallel, we have another tool, uh, BioCore which is used for treatment. In reality, we don't we use the word treatment because we mm. work in, in the wellness area. Right. It's not a medical area as it is. Mm. So we are measuring human energy, mm. biofield. Mm. Biofield is frequency because we are frequency beings. Bioenergy, it's not just uh, emanation, it is fields. And those fields are frequencies. They have their own frequency. And every like body... Hertz frequencies? Uh, yes, it's different frequency. And uh, of course, we know that there are different frequencies in our brain. Our mm -hmm. heart has its own frequency. Our muscles, everybody, everything. Mm -hmm. And then we are measuring those frequency as frequency mm -hmm. pattern. We transform this frequency into music. <laughs> we apply this music to a very special device. And then people have earphones. They have sensor on the forehead and they have music their own individual music plus oh they have influence of super high frequency very low intensity but this frequency comes deep in the cell level and as this frequency is modulated by your own energy field your own mm. biofield then it allows all the parts of the body all the cells of your body to resonate yeah. And in 10 minutes, you have very good effect, tremendous effect. Because it's like a guided meditation. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Because music is the best way for meditation. And uh, very often we have different types of meditation with music. Yeah. And well, by plus the beats and, and all that beats, sort of, yeah. Then, of course, we have much stronger effect. Now we have another instrument of uh, next level where we use this super high frequency and magnetic field, pulse magnetic field. Mm. And this has again, now it is in, um, uh, in clinical testing in different uh, universities, in uh, medical universities, but soon we'll be able to introduce it this year. Then another device that we are preparing uh, for the market is a device that uses light. Mm. Light of different frequency again, different uh, colors. Again, it has tremendous effect. So that is why it is a complex. You can measure with BioWell your own state. You can mm. see how you look like, what's your energy. Then mm. you use this device, that device, this method, that method. Use meditation and you see effect. 
Mm-hmm. You see, whether it is really good for you, whether you do it in the right way, or it's something uh, that you should change. Yeah, it's all look for something else. That is our approach, and we are developing this approach, and it's very popular. What is your ambition with all of this, Constantine? What are you hoping for, for general wellness for the entire population? Because I can tell you're not thinking about just yourself. You're not just thinking about your family. These are tools that you're spreading widely. What is, uh, I don't want to use the word ambition, but the intention is probably the right word. What is your intention for collective wellness with these devices? You see, my idea, I'm not interested in business. I'm not a businessman. Mm. I'm a scientist. So mm-hmm. I'm not interested to create business, to earn money, no. My intention to change the consciousness of the world, of humankind. Mm-hmm. To teach people that we are not just physical bodies, that yeah. we are not flesh. Meat and matter, yeah. We are, beings. we are spiritual beings. We are part of God creation. We are part of universe. Wow. And if people understand this, they, they change the attitude to everything. Mm-hmm. They change the attitude to themselves. They change the attitude to other people. And then they can recreate their own life to be happy. Because the goal mm. of life to live happy life. Not every day to be happy, but all in all to have life which is will Fulfilled. give you great pleasure. Life. Yeah. And most a lot of people they live in stress, they live in anxiety, they live in fear, and this makes their life miserable. Mm. So it doesn't matter how much money you have. You have billions, millions, or you have your just salary. It's uh, most important. It's enough for life, and that's mm. it. But the most important to be happy. That's the most important. And to be happy, you need to have love. You need to love someone in your life. Mm. It may be some who are nearby you. Uh, it may be someone who, are, who are, you are devoted to. It, it may be even some dog or cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The most important for people to have someone to take care of and to mm. love. That's the main uh, and obligatory condition of our happiness. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Harkening back to the telepathic ability of humans, does it only work from human to human or does it work from human to matter and things as well? Um, or let's just say, does it work? Let's start with, does it work from human to pet? Let's just say, can I get my dog to follow me um, telepathically or is it mostly human to human connection? You see, uh, just here in Israel, I have one colleague who has mm. uh, who is a dog trainer mm. and he helps uh, other people to train their dogs. And uh, he has developed this approach to telepathically communicate with dogs. Yeah. And he demonstrated himself, his uh, helpers, they um, telepathically tell dog what to do and dog follow their comments. So mm. that's quite possible. But of well. course, we need to understand this telepathic communication, it needs some uh, concentration. Mm. It needs intention. It needs understanding. Mm-hmm. Of this. So mm-hmm. it's not just easy. Mm. As a way around, when we do it collectively, mm-hmm. that is why we have many cases when people uh, meet collectively in groups uh, and under good trainer, like for example, Jody Spencer or Lynn McTaggart yeah. or some other talented people. Yeah. People we've had on the podcast. Yeah. Them. Yes, yes, yes. How to make F, how to make impact. And if people yeah. are trained and if we can detect this with our sensors, because we have special sensors for this, yeah, then people understand, yes, it's reality. It's not just my crazy imagination. Mm. It's fairy tales. It's just reality. And then they slowly can use it in their everyday life. Mm. And then, of course, it makes their life more uh, strong and more powerful. Yeah, that was one of the um, the books Lynn wrote as well, right? The Power of Eight. When you get eight people together with the intention, you can actually... Um, you can actually see the effect, and I think your devices were instrumental in her helping her figure that out. And also, with a lot of Joe Dispenza's work, he relies on your devices quite quite reliantly. There, what would you say? I'm sure being in the field of spirituality, being in the field of science, being in this first space of wellness, Constantine, you've come across people that have been like, mm, I still find it hard to believe that I'm a being of light. I am meat and matter. Leave me alone. What? 
what do you say to people that find it difficult to believe um, that they are light? Like, do you invite them to come across and have a reading? Or? That not all the people believe in this, and mm. not the pe- all the people understand this. Mm. There are many people who are just materialistic, mm-hmm. and they think that everything is materialistic, and it's okay. So mm. I never try to argue with these people. Mm. Yes, if you don't believe in this, okay, it's up to you. Mm. If you want to develop your spiritual side, that's another story. So mm. that is why, first of all, you need to have intention. Mm-hmm. If you are interested to develop yourself, if you are interested to switch from just materialistic life to much more open life, then you should do it. And then you should follow this path without um, paying attention to other people, other, other people's nice position, things. because yeah. Yeah, because we understand that uh, if you are in some company, then someone will think, oh, you are a crazy person. And mm. it's very typical. I said it you for the case. Mm. Yeah. Yes. No. But if you do, you, you, and you understand, you do it, first of all, for yourself, mm-hmm. not for someone. Of course, if you want, you can teach other people. And I know that some people, they do it. But most important, you do it for yourself. Mm-hmm. That's why you should be sure in what you're doing. And plus, you see thousands and thousands of examples, wonderful examples. We have great spiritual teachers mm-hmm. for centuries. Mm-hmm. We have this uh, our Western world. Our, it's a beautiful people. I met many of them, and they're all wonderful pers- people. And we have this uh, uh, the great development now. More and more people are interested in this, in the world this. Of course, it's not yeah. millions yet. There are so maybe tens of thousands of people, but still. So it's your choice whether yeah. you want to be pure materialistic or mm-hmm. you want to think that there are something more than just our flesh and our reality. Then it mm-hmm. makes life much more interesting. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? You had some interesting experiments with water as well. Can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with an awareness yeah, so of water? I have, uh, I invented special instruments to study um, light uh, photon emission of water. Yeah. And we had many, many experiments. Just uh, this year, this September, we'll have a big conference in uh, Amsterdam on this topic, yeah. on different topics of water study, because uh, we have a lot of new development in water study. And mm. I have a book published um, on Amazon.com. You can find it always together with my dear friend and colleague, Professor Vajekov about uh, new science of water. Mm. So we understand that now we have a notion of structured water. Mm. And it's not just, again, it's not fantasy, because first of all, we have a concept, uh, quantum electrodynamic theory of water. Mm -hmm. It was developed by Emilio Del Giudici, very great physicist, theoretician, uh, from Italy, he passed away, unfortunately, but we were all good friends. Uh, and uh, this theory explained what, what does it mean water. And it mm-hmm. showed that in some conditions in water, molecules may resonate with each other. Yeah. And then we name it as uh, clustered water, as structured water. And this water has a very special properties. We had uh, many experiments with big group of people. For example, once we had experiments with a group of athletes. Mm. It was uh, athletes, young people, and uh, 25 people. They had for one month. They mm-hmm. were drinking structured water with special device. And 25 mm-hmm. people, they had same type of water, but without structure. Not structured. And yes, after three months, we had great difference really significant difference. Mm. We use different instruments. We use uh, evaluation of their uh, physical abilities. It was big, big difference. So mm. it means that if we drink good water, structured water, pure water, then it comes directly to our cells and then yeah. it helps us. So that's why I'm using several liters of water per day. <laughs> I'll toast you on that. I um, yeah. we also yes. we we actually have um, 
when we used to rent in Melbourne City, we actually had a tap filter for the shower and for the kitchen tap, and it was structured water. Um, it's a structured water filter, and now we have one yep. that we've that we bought our own place for our whole home, and it's really heartening to hear you reflect your sentiments on that. Constantine, I'm conscious that those that are tuning in want to find out more about how they can get uh, more awareness around the BioWell devices and how they can find out, like, are these uh, devices purely in the experimentation? Like, are they for labs or can people access some of this information? Can we find out a little bit more about ourselves as human beings? Of what course, do we do? Uh, if you look to um, our website, biowell.com, biowell.com, yeah. well. yeah, you I was find say. some information there. Plus, yeah. we have uh, our colleagues and our friends, distributors, practically worldwide, including mm. Australia. Yeah. So you can uh, reach them. You can see what's going on. And this instrument, in principle, it's for all people who are professionals. Mm. Because mostly they people need it if they have some clients, if they use some in their activity. I don't think that buy well as it is uh, needed for home use. But... Mm -hmm. This year, we uh, put on the market a new device. It is only in BioWell Mobile. Mm -hmm. This is a little device of this size. It operates yeah. with uh, application, a mobile phone application mm -hmm. for uh, iPhone, for uh, Google phone, for any type of phone. Mm -hmm. And this device, of course, this is for home use. Okay. With this device, it is very easy to check your biofield, to see how mm -hmm. it looks like to check your level of stress every day, to yeah. check your chakras, balance of your chakras. And mm. this is really very, very important because, for example, you do some meditation mm. and you can check your base before and after. This process yeah. takes maybe 40 seconds. Check. <laughs> so worth it. You immediately yeah. See this. yeah. So that is why this is a plus. Of course, you have uh, your colleagues, your friends, you demonstrate them and we, you work together with them. And again, you see the effect of this. Mm. So we um, uh, present this device on the market somewhere, uh, maybe it's in autumn, mm -hmm. because now we're in the process of certification. You know, it's a lot of <laughs> paperwork. Yeah, I bet. It's ready for production, but still it's a lot of paperwork. But uh, then it will be for everybody. Mm. And then it will be available for everyone. It's not expensive. So it's easy to use. We have all of the explanation, description, and it's very understandable mm. because we don't present graphs or there are, it will be graphs, but only for people who are interested. But mostly those are images. Yeah. Our world now live on images. Visual. That's why Absolutely. You see the image of biofield, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. When you see the image of chakras, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. When you know that your energy yesterday was 48 joules, but after exercising, you have 65, then it's, mm. it's clear, it's, uh, it's impressive. So yeah. that is why I believe that this device uh, would be very efficient for everybody. I love that. We'll put links in the show notes to, well, Constantine's TED Talk and also Constantine's, um, yeah, the, the BioWell website and other things in below as well. Constantine, I, <laughs> man, thank you so much for this conversation but also it's informed by like you said at least 25 years worth of research and probably a lot of naysaying along the way as well like you trying to communicate to you know satellites from submarines all the way through to helping us understand that we are beings of light man the work of you know joe Dispenza, lynn mctaggart these people that are teaching the world that we are spiritual beings and they're being supported by the work that you're putting out in the world it is such a blessing to have you here with us share you're saying sharing yourself so abundantly here with us today thank you so well, much thank you thank you it was my great pleasure and i was always happy to talk with you Inspired Evolution Tribe and audience, thank you so much for tuning all the way in. You listened all the way through to the end of another episode. I cannot even believe how inspired you guys are to evolve. If you guys tuned into this episode, you will also likely find Lynn McTaggart's episode on intention. Really, really powerful. We're going to link it in just here. In this episode, Lynn basically goes into talking about the power of eight. When eight people get together and collect their intentions, 
things actually shift and manifest and happen. And now with Constantine's work, you can probably tell how she was able to tell whether those shifts were happening or not happening. So check out that episode on the power of your intention. It's an entire masterclass. Check it out now. Keep inspired. Stay evolving. Love you guys.